Hey there, I'm Tucker and you're watching D&D Daily. If you're looking for D&D inspiration and information, then you're in the right spot because today we're going to be talking about golems. Today, specifically the flesh golem. The flesh golem is created using a manual of flesh golems. This requires 60 days of uninterrupted work and 50,000 gold, so it's not a casual accomplishment. When we think about the tactics of the Flesh Golem, it is pretty straightforward. They are just kind of a tank and a bruiser, so they're just gonna run forward and do their slam attack. Um, when we actually look at this Flesh Golem's uh, stat block, we can see that it has damage immunities to lightning, poison, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks and it's immune to the conditions charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, and poisoned. So this thing is immune to a lot, so a lot of characters won't be able to affect it. There are some things you still can do, but there's a lot of things that it is just gonna walk right past. The Flesh Golem also has magic resistance, meaning it has advantage on saving throws against any magic attack or any spell, so it's going to be able to succeed its saving throws much more often. The Golem's attacks also count as magical to bypass any resistance that uh, some of the players might have. Another unique ability of the Flesh Golem is that it has lightning absorption. So whenever the Golem is subjected to lightning damage, instead of taking damage it actually heals for that same amount. The two drawbacks of the Flesh Golem is that first it has an aversion to fire, meaning that if it takes fire damage it's going to have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the end of its next turn. The other weakness is that the Flesh Golem has a berserk feature. When the Flesh Golem falls below 40 hit points, it rolls a d6, and on a 6 it goes berserk. On a each of its turns the golem is just going to attack whatever is closest to it meaning that it's going to attack players it's going to attack uh, npcs it could attack its creator it could just attack the ground this is one of the biggest issues that makes the the flesh golem not the best is because once you get it below 40 hit points it should be easy to uh to start taking out it also has this note unlike the clay golem which we'll go over later that if the creator is within 60 feet of the berserk golem it can try and calm it down using a dc 15 persuasion check i think this plays a lot into the storytelling aspects that we use with this flesh golem i would use the flesh golem most likely as a construct of either a necromancer or kind of a mad scientist artificer wizard type character um, i would see him guarding either a necromancer's lair or crypt or maybe some sort of laboratory or a wizard's tower i see this as kind of a forbidden guardian that people would fear and that they would have disdain towards when thinking about synergies for the Flesh Golem, the obvious choice is anything that does lightning damage. I personally, for the storytelling aspect, would pair it with uh, his creator that could be a storm sorcerer or a armor artificer with his lightning cannon or a tempest cleric or an evocation wizard or an order of scribes wizard. The order of scribes can change their damage type to whatever so he could always change it to lightning. I think all of these would work really well and be just a very strong pairing. Keep in mind that if you are doing these synergies they are going to be stronger than just the CRs of the creatures. They're going to be a lot stronger. I think one of the best storytelling opportunities I can think of is a flesh golem whose master died so it started going Going berserk. It could be destroying a town after the party assassinates his master, or maybe the party was on the master's side and saw him get murdered, and then they have to stop his creation from going mad. Either way, they would have to deal with this flesh golem, and it's an interesting hook into this story. How would you use the flesh golem in one of your games? What's a better story you can think of, or what's a better situation to use him in? Who does he pair well with and who does he not pair well with? Let us know in the comments. And on these next episodes of D&D Daily, we're also going to be going over the clay, stone, and iron golems. So make sure to hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss it. See ya!